On today's show, we're going to talk about power plants. Those wonderful AC regenerators. Now, for those of you that don't know what a power plant is, well, here's, gosh, here's, <laughs> just happens. This is uh, the heat sink section out of one. This is out of our P5. And it's essentially, and these are the cooling fans that are very quiet. Uh, it's a power amp. And the very first regenerator I ever made started out with one of our 2C plus amplifiers, power amplifiers, driven with a sine wave generator. And the stereo output of it actually became the 110 volt plug that equipment went into. And so a power plant is an AC regenerator, it takes the power out of the wall, AC, converts it to DC, and then back again to AC. And, and thus, by doing that, fixes the problems of AC. It, it regulates the power, it lowers the output impedance, dramatically improves the performance of connected equipment. All right, so that, that's the background on what a power plant is. Uh, Gene from Phoenix, Arizona. Hey, Paul, I'm guessing that in your quest for the best way to design a power plant, you must have experimented using Class D amplifier modules to generate the power. Indeed, we did. Uh, they can put out huge amounts of power and are extremely efficient. And from a power amp standpoint, some of them sound pretty darn good. Can you tell us if you tried them out for the power plants? Yes, indeed. And they did not meet our expectations. So it's not that they can't, but there are a number of problems. So let's, let's look at what the basic problem that a power plant faces. And, and most people don't know this. There is a way that engineers describe power, and it's called a power factor, okay? So a power factor describes how the voltage and the current move at the same time or not, all right? If you have a heater or a light bulb, something that would have a power factor of one, that would mean that the voltage and the current in this sine wave moving up and down are in sync. So as the voltage of the sine wave coming out of the wall rises up, the current rises up as well. So you're drawing a current in sync with the voltage, okay? That's a power factor of one. And that applies to very simple resistive loads like a light bulb or an electric heater. When we talk about an amplifier or a preamplifier or a piece of uh, e even a, uh, a computer, we talk about lower power factors and amplifiers, for instance, uh, a, a typical power amplifier, class AB8 and class A amplifier, will have a power factor much lower, like 0.6 or 0.7. So what does that mean? What that means is that the voltage and the current don't follow each other as the voltage of the sine wave out of the wall begins to rise, no current is being drawn. And no current is drawn until the very peak of that sine wave. And then all of a sudden, a massive amount of current, bam, in a, what looks like a square wave, uh, is, it draws a huge amount of current. And then as the sine wave peak ends and goes down the other side, no more current is drawn. Now, I can explain the reason for that it has to do with a, the capacitors inside of our power amplifier, which hold a charge. Uh, and when uh, on every cycle, that charge that they're like little batteries, as they hold that charge, then, then when they're not being charged, they are, of course, dissipating their energy, feeding it into the amplifier and they drain the power supply caps, but not by everything. They're not completely drained. So maybe they get drained 20%. Maybe 20% of their stored energy goes down. Well, as the sine wave, now now in the next cycle, we're going to charge them. So it's a, it's a uh, for, for every 60th or 120th of a second, it, there's a charging. We, we The voltage from the wall goes up and we charge whatever is depleted from those capacitors. And then as the sine wave goes down, those capacitors then dump their energy into the amplifier. So charge and dump, charge and dump. 
as it dumps, it doesn't dump all of it. It dumps only, say, 20%. The next time that the sine wave comes up, it's, you don't need current. You don't need to charge that cap up. So the, the current does not follow the voltage until we reach that point where the cap is empty and then wham, all kinds of current has to come out. What this does is distort the top of the sine wave. So if we have, I want to show, We've been thinking about making these into podcasts, so if, if that's if you're actually listening to this on a podcast, forgive me. So I'm going to try and draw as little as possible. But as the sine wave comes up, what happens is when we have this big divot full of current, it actually flat tops instead of this nice, pretty round sine wave. All of a sudden, it cuts it off because it it can't deliver the power. Right now, a power plant has its own energy storage, and it makes up for that. And so what comes out of a power plant, out of the regenerator, is a perfect sine wave. And, and this is right here at the point. This peak of the sine wave is where you absolutely need the voltage. And with all this equipment hooked up from your neighbors, from you, because we all share power, um, the typical sine wave coming out of our wall is lopped off like that. And you, and you can't get the energy you need when you need it. Power plants fix that. So. How does this all relate to a class D? Well, our power plants are all class AB amplifiers, right? Fed by these big power supplies and huge banks of capacitors. And we do that because a class AB amplifier with a traditional power supply, while not all that efficient, is very good at delivering huge amounts of current instantly, upwards of 50 amps, which is a lot, right? I mean, your circuit breaker will kick at 15 amps. And here we are going to have a peak of 50. So far beyond what your circuit breaker would allow, but since it's very short, we can get away with it, right? Um, in your wall, you don't because now you're going to flat top it. Well, a class D amplifier, that's the worst position you can put it in. When you start drawing current from a low power factor through a class D amplifier, which doesn't have a whole lot of power supply behind it, it just uh, and collapses. And then you actually make a, a bigger divot than you started with. You'll have more distortion than you're trying to fix. So class D amplifiers in a UPS or in a regenerator work pretty well for simple loads. When you start having complex loads like power amplifiers and all that, they fail miserably. So that's why we don't use them. Anyway, that was a great question. Thanks for asking. Talk to you later.